Well, hey there, folks. I'm meteorologist Matt Barrington. Of course, we are tracking both Marco and Laura here this afternoon. We have live updates for you top and bottom of the hour every hour. Here's Marco a little closer of a look. This one has really expanded this morning. It's growing to a much uh, bigger storm and a stronger storm as well. Here's what we got with the alerts. We have tropical storm watches up for Mobile and Baldwin County as well as George County, Mississippi. The coastal counties of Mississippi are under a tropical storm warning there in yellow and this red color that is hurricane warning for southeast Louisiana here as this storm approaches. All right, coastal flood advisories for all of our local coastlines. Water rise between one and three feet. That will only impact the most vulnerable areas to the west end of Dauphin Island, the causeway leading down to Dauphin Island, or the causeway here across the bay. So I'll be watching out for all those areas to see some overwash and flooding. Here's what it looks like uh, with the current numbers. Marco is now a hurricane. It became one at around 1130 when the hurricane hunters flew on down there and they found hurricane force winds and this expanding storm here this morning. Look how it just grows out there this morning. So it is definitely a uh, storm that's getting itself better organized, but still moving to the north at a pretty good clip. And the good news here is that it is running into wind shear in the upper levels of the environment that should help to dampen much more in the way of uh, of, of intensifying. So that's the good news here with Marco. So here it is and that the actual forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. This will get updated again at four o'clock this afternoon. At four o'clock update will be a big update. So you're going to want to check in here at Fox 2 News. Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith will be in by then. He'll be bringing you the latest with a brand new forecast track. But until then, we have this one. This is one from earlier. And Still shows basically about the same sort of deal with Marco. It's going to be a category one storm or close to that at landfall somewhere in southeast Louisiana. That puts us not directly in the path, which is good news, but we're still going to be on the right side of this. And remember, counterclockwise flow around a tropical system that will give us some nasty weather, likely top end tropical storm conditions, especially at our beaches like Adolph now and areas like Fort Morgan Peninsula. They'll get a, a pretty good blast by Marco as it goes on by. All right, also we got Laura. Laura's got winds of 50 miles per hour moving to the west northwest at 21. So it's really cooking along. It's going to move over Cuba and then emerge out of Cuba as a tropical storm on Monday evening. Then things get really dicey with Laura. Every model that we're seeing coming out just 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 keeps going higher and higher with the storm. And the reason why is because it's pretty much a perfect setup in the upper levels of the environment for intensification on Tuesday. This is the Tuesday map of what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Light wind shear, an upper level high that helps to exhaust the storm, really helps to uh, feed its structure. So this storm is going to go from a, a middling tropical storm likely to a very powerful hurricane as it crosses the Gulf of Mexico. Right now the Hurricane Center has it getting up to a category two, but just something to be aware of. If it does end up going farther to the west, it'll spend more time over the Gulf. It may actually get even stronger than that. It's just a matter of how much time does it spend over the Gulf because it will thankfully be moving fairly quickly. If it was a slow moving storm, this one would become an absolute monster. So that is Laura. You can see the spread in the, the forecast pattern takes it through much of Louisiana and parts of Texas. And if it's anywhere on the eastern side of this, keep in mind, we'll still get some pretty decent impacts from it. If it stays farther to the west, our impacts would be lessened. See our future cast. This is the European model. If you were paying, watching last half hour, I showed the American model. There's some heavy rain from Marco tomorrow morning, so we can anticipate bands moving through as the storm is getting closer to land. Heavy rain at times for your morning commute tomorrow. An afternoon commute probably won't be quite as bad, but still raining pretty heavily here across the area as that moves on inland. And then, of course, Marco moves off, and then here comes Laura moving in. And the European model really has this thing going more over to the west, say over towards Houston and uh, Galveston. So that's what the European model says. Some of the other models have it farther to the east. We're going to continue to watch that for you, of course. Heading offshore, Dolphin Island here, five feet waves. Things are starting to pick up out there in the surf. These, the surf conditions or the wave conditions will just get higher here over the next day or so. Here's the rain that we have going on uh, today. It'll be off and on today, so we're not going to be washed out today all day long. Tomorrow, though, we likely will be. Here comes the big rains from Marco. Heavy rain throughout the day here on our Monday. Just be, be prepared for that to deal with heavy uh, all day tropical type of rain on our Monday. And that also will be in the case for Tuesday and then Wednesday. Once again, Wednesday, how much rain we get really depends on how close that storm gets. If it moves farther off to the west, say over towards Texas, we'll be able to lower our rain chances there with Laura. Temperatures won't be bad. They'll be in the 80s. So that's how things look out there the next several days. I want to head over to Baldwin County and Michael Warwick. He's out the emergency operations center. Michael, I know the uh, county commissioners have been talking. Uh, what have they come up with? 
Yeah, the EMA just wrapped up its meeting with the county commission, health department leaders, the sheriff's office, deciding this afternoon, Matt, to cancel COVID-19 testing at the PZK Hall testing site in Robertsdale. Just one testing site that's been canceled as the one of the main concerns here in Baldwin County they discussed this afternoon was the wind gusts and they just didn't want those outdoor tents uh, and the testers and the people going to get tested having to deal with wind gusts possibly uh, moving those tents or, or, or hurting any pe anybody. That's one of the main concerns as well down on Fort Morgan Road. The other things discussed right now, no plans to do a local state of emergency and no plans to begin opening evacuation shelters, both for the folks here or for evacuees from possibly Louisiana, maybe Texas or Mississippi. No plans at all in Baldwin County to open any evacuation shelters. But Matt, as you know, 15 odd years forecasting these types of storms that come up through the Gulf, anything could change. And that's what EMA Director Zach Hood just said moments ago. You cannot let your guard down here in Baldwin County. Matt. All right, thank you, Michael. Of course, we're also keeping our ears out for any uh, school closures. Haven't heard of any just yet, but we will let you know as soon as we do. We'll have updates here top and bottom of the hour each and every hour here on Fox 10 News all day long for your Sunday. I'm meteorologist Matt Barron. We will see you soon.